Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Welcome, Weirdos. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. If you're new here, welcome to the podcast, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. If you're already a weirdo, please share the podcast with others. Doing so helps make it possible for me to keep doing the podcast. And while you're listening, be sure to check out the Weird Darkness website so you can find me on social media and drop me an email. This is a Dark Chapters episode, when I bring you an entire chapter of a random book or novel, so long as it fits the Weird Darkness genre, of course, to give you an idea of whether you would want that book in your own personal collection. Unlike other episodes of Weird Darkness where I will edit for content, I am treating these Dark Chapters like audiobooks meaning I am narrating them exactly as the author has written them, in order to give you an accurate representation of the style and content of the book or novel. So, listener discretion is advised. Coming up in this episode, in the book The Long Fall, Book One, The Inception of Horror, Lucifer, always cunning and intelligent, challenges his father to a battle of wits. Being the angel of light, he casts a judgmental eye upon mankind. He begins a war against his fellow archangels and God. Michael, along with his archangel siblings, defend their home, father, and mankind from their deranged brother. Lucifer unleashes his wrath upon heaven and a great, epic battle ensues. Broadswords and hand-to-hand -hand combat drench heaven in blood. The four apocalyptic steeds are released, each having their own destructive power. Betrayal and lust are at biblical levels. Understand the very creation of evil and the consequences that transpire in the first of the Long Fall series. Now, Chapter 10, The War Rages from the Long Fall, Book 1, The Inception of Horror by Kathleen McCluskey. So bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. Lucifer, snug yet ever aware in his tent, could feel that he had somehow been betrayed. He sensed his brothers and their armies very close to them. He screamed, Raphael! And he appeared, Yes, my lord. Lucifer slapped Raphael across the mouth and said, You broke your concentration, and the virtues and the dominations, along with Gabriel and Michael, are on their way. You fool! I told you to cloak us! Master, I never broke my concentration. No one can penetrate my mind, not even him. Master, your effect on the west end of heaven has been dramatic. Your evil and hatred have blocked out most of the sun. The flowers are wilting and dying. Even the trees have begun to lose their leaves. Maybe he, uh, it has sensed the physical change occurring in this land. Lucifer angrily paced the floor. You may be right, but my gut is telling me we have a spy. I will make such an example of this deceiver that all of heaven will know my cruelty. Lucifer sat in his chair and said, I'm going to visit Ramael. I want some torture advice from him. Raphael said, Master Ramael will never talk. He'll not give anything to you willingly. But I'm sure that once you begin to burn or torture him, you may break him and he may talk. Lucifer rubbed his hands together and sparks flew from between his palms. Shocked, he did it again, harder and faster this time, and larger sparks flew from his palms. Oh, this is quite nice. What a wonderful new ability. He rubbed them harder, and large blue and red flames came emerging through his fingers and licked at his palms. I now own the power of flame. Just wonderful. Raphael, shocked, said, Master, this needs to be harnessed so you can use it at your will. To be granted such an amazing gift is truly a mighty achievement. Lucifer grinned widely, showing his large fangs, his forked tongue lashing in and out of his mouth. Ramael will never see this coming. 
He will think I need to use an archaic form of fire like a torch. He is in for an amusing and terrifying surprise. Lucifer left his tent and stared at every seraph he saw. He sensed no spies in any of them. He knew it was Raphael. What a fool! I'll deal with him in my own time. Right now I need him and his healing ability. Then I shall see what I will do with him. He entered the tent where the bound and shackled Ramael stood, restrained against a pole. Throwing a bucket of water on his brother's face to wake him, Lucifer said, Would you like a drink, brother? Ramael shook his head, and Lucifer, angered, said, You will look at me and answer me. Do not defy me, brother. Ramael looked up, hatred in his eyes, and said, Yes, brother, I would like a drink. That's better. Now you may have a drink. Lucifer held up a ladle of water to his brother's dry and parched lips. Ramael begged for more, and Lucifer said, I need something from you, dear brother. Then more water. As you know, I have no fear of you. I need some torture tricks, and I need them now. You can willingly tell your secrets, or I will take them by force. Ramael laughed and said, Do you really think I would divulge any information to you? Lucifer giggled and began to rub his palms together. Large blue and red flames sprang from his palms and upward. Lucifer sneered. Scared yet, brother? No, you should be. Actually, you should be terrified. Lucifer could feel his younger brother tense up and smiled. He moved closer to Ramael and said, Do you ever want the ability of flight ever again? Walking behind his bound brother, Lucifer started at the bottom of his left wing and began to singe the feathers. Lucifer took great delight in his torturing ability. Ramael screamed in agony and said, Never! Lucifer went higher onto the wing, the smell of burning feathers and flesh filling the room. Ramael began to sob, yet defiantly said, Never! Lucifer went to the right wing and started at the bottom again. Ramael screamed and begged for mercy. He had never been on the receiving end of torture. He always took great pride in his torturous work and was void of empathy. He was in complete agony, and finally he spoke, I'll tell you, please spare my beloved wings and my ability of flight. Lucifer smiled and said, My, my, brother, I thought you would have given me more of a fight. You are pathetic and useless. You were the great torturer? <laughs> that amuses me. I see you can dish it out, but can't take it, pussy. Raphael left Lucifer's tent and paced back and forth in front of it. He nervously thought about the enemy finding their hideout. I did lose my concentration, and if Lucifer finds out, I am a dead angel. He thought for a moment of whom he could inflict his ability on to fool Lucifer. But what if the great leader found out? He couldn't risk it. He had to block Lucifer from his thoughts and only permit him to see what Raphael wanted him to see. Lucifer's power was becoming stronger daily, his psychic ability almost rivaling Raphael's. Raphael could not let him find out that it was his mistake that might cost him this war. He wanted to flee, but where would he go? Back to the father? That was a death sentence, too. Gabriel set up camp about five miles from the Seraphim camp. Gabriel could smell them. He wanted so desperately to eliminate the scouts so that Michael and the Dominations could win the battle. He spoke to his army. My brother Michael and I are your new leaders. I will choose six of my best killing machines to rid the perimeter of the Seraphim guards. I want you to use the stealth that Ramael taught all of you. Be extremely quiet. The Seraphim will be able to sense you, but if they can't see you, you will be invisible to them. I will protect your six with my psychic ability as much as I can. Try not to engage in battle with them, as the sounds of the swords clanking together will alert the others. I know that Ramael gave all of you special weaponry. These must be utilized. Each of you carry piano wire and knives. I beg you to use them. A rear attack is your best bet. I know, with you being virtuous, this goes against everything you've been taught by your beloved leader, Ramael. The situation is much different and needs to be done as sneakily and underhanded as possible. The six virtues looked at one another, 
confused by a sneak attack, the concept being foreign to them. Ramael always taught them to confront their enemies and give them a fighting chance. To die protecting heaven was a beautiful death. Face to face, blade against blade. These were the tactics they were used to and knew well. Not facing one's enemy and looking in his eyes as they died was not a glorious thing. It was shunned. The six knew that this new maneuver was what was going to be needed and agreed with Gabriel. Gabriel spoke to the six. Now go, and do as I've instructed. I want all of you to come back victorious. Be stealthy, silent, and deadly. Blessed are among the warriors that tread into battle. He lay his hand on each one of their heads as they nodded at him. The first sentry seemed to know something was lurking about. He drew his longsword and took a defensive stance. The virtue was directly behind him. The seraph swung his sword wildly, knowing that someone or something was there. In one quick and decisive move, the Virtue wrapped his piano wire around the Seraph's throat and removed his head. The other guards could feel the death of their compatriot telepathically, and they came toward their fallen comrade. Two Virtues were lying in wait, hidden among the mist of the clouds, their white wings held tightly to their bodies. The camouflage was almost complete. The Seraphim running to help their fellow soldier didn't even see them in the cloud layer. The virtues, swept at the ankles and both guards going down immediately, ate the knives of both virtues. The virtually invisible attackers knew that more would be coming, and they needed to regroup to surprise the new bait. Four seraphim guards came through the mist. Seeing the dead sentries, they drew their swords. Slowly, they approached the spot of the guards and saw the beheading. They circled around the headless corpse, swords raised and in front of them. The virtues struck with such silence and stealth that the seraphim didn't even know that they were there until they lay dead in the clouds. The virtues bent down and removed their blades from the backs of the dead and dying seraphim. One virtue even spit on a dying seraphim and said, You make me sick going against father. May your soul rot for all eternity without a home. One of the other virtues, with a look of shock on his face, fell to the cloud deck, bleeding profusely out of his side, a seraphim smiling behind him. But he didn't smile for long. From behind him, piano wire was thrown around his neck, and he was beheaded. The virtues grabbed their brother and carried him back to camp. They had done enough damage for one night. They wished Raphael and his healing power were waiting for them, but only Gabriel, with his ability to give life or take it away, was there. Their virtue brother was badly wounded, and they knew Gabriel would not spare his life. Two of the virtues went back to the seraphim camp. They were looking for Lucifer himself. They crept through the camp, stealthily, almost invisible. Luckily, they spotted Lucifer coming out of the tent that they knew held Ramael. They wanted desperately to save their leader, and a surprise attack upon Lucifer himself would be the end of this cursed war. They silently walked past the tent and looked at Lucifer's back, his very large wings, no longer white and feathery, were now black and leathery. The one virtue gave out a gasp, and Lucifer smiled and stopped in his tracks. I can smell your fear. I can hear your hearts beating ever so fast. Lucifer sniffed the air. (laughs) Ah, and you are virtues. Finally, Lucifer turned to look at the two virtue warriors and smiled. They both were shocked at the size of the fangs within his mouth. He hissed at them and came closer to their faces. He thought about taking them alive and torturing them, but he needed to release his rage. He was so angered that seven of his sentry guards had been killed. In one quick move, he grabbed them and rammed both his fists deeply into their armor. He pulled out their hearts and threw them to the cloud deck. Laughing heartily as life ran from them and they collapsed, Lucifer knew he was going to win this war. Triumphantly, Lucifer began to stroll through the darkness and back to his tent. The remaining three virtues carried their bleeding friend back to the camp. They went straight to Gabriel's tent. They lay his dying body upon the floor and called for Gabriel. He appeared and went straight to the side that had the deep wound. The other virtues knew that Gabriel, being the angel of life and death, would soon put their fellow soldier out of his misery. They all bowed their heads and prayed together. Heavenly Father, 
Please accept this soul into your bosom. He was a fierce warrior, yet led a pure and righteous life. May he live forever within the special place in your kingdom reserved for dead angels. Thank you, Father, for this blessing. Gabriel looked up and said, What are you three doing? I will not take the life of this brave soldier. He will live to fight again. He is badly wounded, but I will be merciful and grant him life instead of taking it. The three virtues, stunned, bowed their heads. Thank you. You are as fair and righteous as Ramael. We would have followed you anywhere as our new leader, but now we know that you are truly worthy of our loyalty and respect. Gabriel, confused, looked about the room. I sent out six of you, yet only four returned. Do the others fall in combat? The lead virtue bent to one knee, his blood-spattered armor dripping on the floor. With the hilt of his sword against his forehead, he began to speak. Commander, we ambushed and killed seventy sentry guards. We regrouped, and the one that you so graciously spared was stabbed in the back. We carried our fallen brother, and two of us could not control our virtue reserve. They fled our group and went to find Lucifer himself to kill him. Gabriel asked, What happened to them? Do they live? Are they captive? Are they being tortured by my unfeeling brother? I want answers, and I want them now. These were not my instructions. In and out, kill the sentry guards as quietly as possible was what I commanded. Yet two of you defied me. You speak of trust with me. How is it I can trust all of you? If not total obedience to me, then to whom? I know that Ramael was your leader and all of you loved him. However, he is not here. I am. You will obey me as if I were he. Gabriel moved to the other side of the room and said, I need to step away from you as your psychic powers interfere with mine. I will find my brother's mind and gain all the strategic and death thoughts that I can. I'm going to find out exactly what happened to our fellow freedom fighters. Now, leave me be. I will tell you what transpired. It'll be no easy task penetrating my brother's mighty barrier in his mind. Now, go. Take your comrade with you. He's already beginning to heal. Gabriel lay upon his bed and closed his eyes. He searched the darkness and finally came upon Lucifer, resting in his bed. His eyes closed, and Gabriel thought, good, he's asleep. Gabriel tried to penetrate Lucifer's mind and was denied. He stepped back and tried again. Again, he was denied. Gabriel was now sweating profusely and getting tired. With one last push, he was inside his cunning brother's mind, searching the dark recesses of his brother's memories. Gabriel searched and searched for information about the dead virtues. Gabriel tiptoed through his powerful brother's mind. He didn't want to be noticed in there. He finally came to the memory of the virtues and was horrified at the brutality. Killing an angel was heartbreaking enough, but to do it with your bare hands? What sort of monster had his brother turned into? Gabriel then saw his brother and lost his concentration for just a moment. I see you have seen my true form, brother. Lucifer's voice almost screamed in his head. You let me in, didn't you? Lucifer bellowed with laughter and said, <laughs> Of course I did. Don't you just love my true form? This is what I was meant to become, the frightening newly crowned king of heaven. I was to be seen this way so all of heaven would fear me. Are you scared, dear brother? Does fear fill your heart? It should. Gabriel tried to release himself from Lucifer's grip on his mind. It was a death grip. Don't fight me, brother. It just makes it more strenuous on you. You will need every ounce of energy to even get close to me. You will need your strength to face me on the field of battle. Our swords will meet very soon. Now get the fuck out of my head! When Lucifer screamed even louder, Gabriel's body was lifted and thrown through the back of the tent. Gabriel lay in the clouds, gasping for breath. Two virtue guards came running to his aid and touched the archangel to help him up. Defiantly, the once gentle and always fair Gabriel screamed, Get your fucking hands off me! Don't ever touch an archangel again! The guards still helped him up and could see the panic in his eyes. 
Brushing off his armor and unsteadily standing, he spoke. I have seen Lucifer. I went into his mind. Almost crying in fear, he continued, I went in, and, though he did not know I was there, he grabbed my mind and would not release it. I have never felt such helplessness. I can even overpower Raphael's mighty telepathy, but this was different. He baited me. He wanted me to see. He beckoned my mind to infiltrate his. His power is so great that I will never try and read him again. I may become his mental prisoner for all time. I do believe that Michael is the only chance we have against Lucifer's incredible psychic ability. As Michael never uses his, it's lain dormant for centuries. Michael would rather fight with his sword than his mind. That always benefited Michael, as even when Lucifer was a child, he played mind games with Michael that he didn't quite understand. Michael would become enraged at this and felt inferior to Lucifer. However, Michael's size was always a threat to Lucifer, so he never truly mentally infiltrated him. Michael's always been the largest and mightiest of all of us. Now I have seen Lucifer in his new form. His size is almost as big as Michael's, and he grows hourly. Now I need five of you to go seek out Michael and the Dominations and get them here as quickly as possible. I want them to fly like the wind and be here in three hours. Time is of the essence. Lucifer's power is growing increasingly rapid. The Virtues soldiers bowed and said, Yes, Commander, we will have them here in two hours. Gabriel said, Wonderful. Blessings to you, my brothers. Be swift and cautious. My love is with all of you. Gabriel thought to himself, Please, let Michael get here. I have no desire to deal with Lucifer and death. I will deal with Raphael and war. The advantage is to Michael, as the battle-hardened warrior he is. He's been fighting for father and his laws for centuries. He knows how to wield a sword and take advantage of any weakness shown by an opponent. Father's gift to us, against the apocalyptic steeds, will definitely be Lucifer's downfall. He will not see that coming. Michael will be victorious, as always. Lucifer's size will mean nothing. Michael is the most fierce warrior in all of heaven. Gabriel reluctantly thought about his brother Lucifer. He didn't want to be mentally captured again. His experience as a fighting angel was adolescent at best. His greatest weapon in his arsenal was mind games, but Michael was almost immune to such pedestrian fighting. His childhood taught him long ago how to deal with Lucifer's mind games. He now had learned the ability to almost block his brother, it seemed like fate that they fought like this as children. Michael would need to harness a sleeping giant of psychic ability. Lucifer would never see it coming. He was almost as strong as Raphael with his mind. Lucifer sat upright in his bed, half asleep, yet very aware of his mind. He knew the dominations were coming. He knew that weak-minded Gabriel had warned them. He couldn't wait to behead Gabriel. Actually, he would let Raphael do it. What a sweet sorrow to witness on both sides. He could feel something different about Michael, and sent his mind out to seek his weak-willed brother. He found him flying, with his beautiful white wings flapping and swooshing in the air. A twinge of envy filled his heart and enraged him. My fucking larger leathery wings are faster and less destructible than measly feathers. He sent his mind out to his warrior brother. Michael landed in the cloud deck and said, "'Oh, you fucking excuse for an angel! What the fuck are you trying to do in my head? Trying to read me, I see!' Lucifer, irritated that Michael knew he was there, said, "'I'm here to read you, stupid!' Michael just shook his head and let Lucifer continue. Partway through Michael's mind, Lucifer encountered a brick wall. "'This is new. Trying to build a wall against me, brother!' Michael, in his mind, said, "'No, brother, you built this wall yourself, with all the games and bullshit thrown my way through your mind over the centuries. I had no choice but to create this fortress for my inner thoughts. Now, say hello to my wall.' The infinite brick wall began to slide forward, and Lucifer was abruptly thrown out of Michael's mind. Lucifer enraged through a tantrum, while Michael only smiled and continued his flight toward the Seraphim camp. 
Lucifer screamed in anger and wanted nothing more than to capture the virtues. He sent out a mental message to all seraphim. Capture the virtues. I have something special planned for them and Ramael. If you kill a virtue, my wrath will be complete. Sacrifice yourself for the capture of the virtues. I also want dominations captured for my entertainment. I really don't care how many dominations you kill. Bring me two hundred captive virtues. I also want two hundred dead dominations brought back to camp. I have something terribly beautiful to present to any enemy that tries to get into my camp. If you feel the need to bring a few live dominations, by all means go ahead. Their death screams will be heard throughout heaven. I've changed my mind. I really don't care if the dominations are alive or dead, but a few live ones would please me greatly. Do not fail me, and again, do not touch my brothers Gabriel and Michael. An archangel is to be killed by another archangel. I intend to be that archangel. You pathetic grunts are not worthy of murdering a great being. Michael's wings surged through the air when he got another mental message. He landed on the cloud deck and said, "'Fuck off, Lucifer! I already told you I am basically immune to your games!' The voice inside Michael's head was the father's. "'Oh, my father, my lord, I, I am sorry!' Jehovah spoke. "'No need for apologies. All is fair in love and war. I have an image to send to your mind.' This image is going to disturb you, as this is what Lucifer has become. God sent the transformation of his second-born to Michael. Michael dropped to one knee in the clouds and said, Heavenly Father, is this what evil does to an archangel? I would rather you cut my throat than become this. Jehovah spoke, My dearest of all my angels, I wanted you to be aware of your brother's transformation, so you were not caught off guard. I would never slice your throat, my ever-loyal son. Remember, you have my protection from the horses, death, and war. Use it wisely, and don't be foolish and rush at death. My protection will diminish the more you touch him. I love you, my son, and be careful. Do not let your brute overrule your intelligence. Michael again spread his mighty wings and flew as fast as he could to the seraphim camp. Oh, how he wanted to kill Lucifer, ramming his sword through his chest. Up ahead of him he could see Gabriel and the Virtue Army waiting for their arrival. Gabriel smiled widely at his brother, and Michael could feel his brother's love and smiled back. Lucifer, Raphael, and Seraquel, all atop one of the cloud peaks, watched as a fraction of the Seraphim army began its exodus from camp. Lucifer sat upon death, Raphael upon war, and Seraquel standing between them. Lucifer had granted him the same protection from the horses just as God did for Gabriel and Michael. Lucifer had no idea that the father had granted the same protection to his brothers. Seraquel asked Lucifer, "'Shall I stay here with you, or shall I go with the rest of the army?' Lucifer answered, "'Stay here, as Raphael and I have some business to attend to in the main portion of heaven. We need to make an appearance to the civilians. They need to see who their new leader will be.' Raphael said, "'I didn't know of this plan. You need to be kept abreast of what's going on, brother. I'm not permitted into your mind without losing my own head in the process.' Lucifer sneered at his brother and said, "'I'm glad you remembered my rule about my mind, but you disappoint me with your arrogance as to question anything I do. I do not need permission from you. As a matter of fact, I do not need anybody's permission. Now you will follow me. Our steeds could make the five-day ride to the middle of heaven. However, it will take them only a few hours, as we will help them with our aerial dominance.' We can make it in a few hours. I can sense my brothers, and they are together. They are extremely close, but what we are about to do will distract them enough for the seraphim. They will be able to slaughter the dominations and capture the virtues. What I have in store for its home is going to be grand, and, may I add, very gory. Seraquel flew down from the cloud peak and went to his tent. 
Lucifer then spoke to both horses. Raphael and I are going to help you both gain even greater speed. Our wings will allow you to have more power in your gallop. Now, let's make our way to the center of heaven, and with any luck, it'll be there. I will have my chance to end this war and become supreme leader of all of heaven. With a quick kick to death's side, they began the long journey back to heaven proper. Raphael followed suit, except war tried to bite him as he kicked him. Raphael said to his stud, "'Don't you ever try that again. You will not have to deal with Lucifer. I will get so far into your mind, you stupid animal, that your skull will explode from the inside out. I can feel you inside of my head already, and your power is mighty. I will never try that again.' Raphael's white wings spread out and flapped. War caught up with death, and the four of them made their way to the center of heaven. Leathery wings, along with feathery wings, gave the horses a lift off the cloud deck so they could gallop through the air instead of having the clouds inhibit their speed. Raphael and Lucifer arrived at heaven's main gates. They looked at each other, War digging a hole in the cloud deck. He was ready. Death, basically, was calm and collected. He looked at War and shook his head and said, "'Fool, don't be so overzealous. You will warn the rest of those accursed angels inside. Do you not think our riders will fly us over this high but yet pathetic barrier? Calm yourself, and I mean right now.' Lucifer said, "'I agree with you, my mighty companion. Raphael, control that horse now!' With War finally calmed, the archangels easily breached the top of the barrier and landed softly, like an angel feather falling to the clouds. The interlopers looked around and saw that there were no angels in sight. They began to stroll through the corridors, seeing all the sub-angel quarters, and noticed they were sleeping. Lucifer looked at Raphael and said, "'Watch this new power I have acquired.' With a mighty high-pitched screech, one that would shatter a glass, he rattled all of heaven's suburb. The first angel to appear, Lucifer recognized as a member of the jury. Lucifer said, I recognize you, pig. Should I spare you? I knew your thoughts in the courtroom and knew you were with me. Either join my cause or perish. The sub-angel said, Never, and went for his sword. It was not there, to his surprise. He was rudely awoken and forgot his sword in his chambers. The sheer terror in his eyes made Lucifer giggle. Through a telepathic connection with death, Lucifer sent him a message. With a giant grin on the horse's face, he rammed his head into the sub-angel's chest, and immediately the angel wailed and was turned to dust. Death said, "'Master, my dear master, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.' The next angel was Lucifer's prey. This angel was not caught off guard. He drew his sword against Lucifer." He laughed with delight and thought of the blood that was already soaking the upper layers of the clouds. It was about to get darker. Lucifer was not amused, and with one quick sweep of his broadsword, he beheaded the betrayer. Others emerged from their chambers, all with swords drawn. War ran past Lucifer and went into action. Kicking wildly with front feet and back, he dismembered angels in all directions. Raphael, with his sword swinging over his head and down upon the angels that avoided war, beheaded at his will, and his armor was covered in blood. Bodies of dismembered and beheaded angels lay everywhere. Lucifer sat back and watched the mayhem develop in front of him. He finally called Raphael back with his mind, but Raphael was losing control of war. Death had to telepathically hurt the steed before it would relent and come back to Death's side. War was defeated in his mind by Death, who was more powerful. He was the greatest of steeds, Death was still controlled by the all-powerful Lucifer, and this terrified War. He thought in his head and sent the message to Death. The angel that rides you scares me. I will never doubt you or your rider ever again. Please forgive my excitement at handing down a bit of war with the angels. It gets the best of me. Lucifer spread his wings and knew what the horses tried to hide from him with their animal minds. He said, Okay. We need to take a moment and look at the slaughter that War and Raphael has just reigned in heaven. I bet those fucking awful humans are being rained upon from the heavens with angel blood. He gave a hearty and gut-filled laugh and said, <laughs> Serves those motherfuckers right. 
I bet they're terrified and praying to him. A fruitless endeavor, to be sure. They should be praying to me. Then, maybe, just maybe, I may spare them. The four trotted through the suburb of heaven, blood splashing onto the horses' legs and onto their bellies. Death looked at war and spoke telepathically. Lucifer interferes in the conversation with the horses, he said. Any survivors will be given a choice. Side with us or die. Any dying survivors of your brutal yet beautiful attack are mine if they make the wrong choice. I will kill them myself. To join the victorious, then they will be spared. I want to feel the power to give life or take it away. Do you understand? Dismounting death, he walked in front of their blood-soaked bodies and spoke directly to the horses. You pathetic animals think I cannot penetrate your feeble minds? Knowing death was the most powerful of the four horses, he said in his mind, looking directly at Lucifer, They are all yours. Lucifer could hear their conversation and just grinned. He was the most powerful of all psychics in heaven. He relished the power. He mounted death, all their armor caked in the blood of the innocent, and rode down the hallway. Death and war kicking and stepping upon dead angel bodies. The crunching of bones and popping of skulls made the horses smile. Blood spurted in all directions, and Lucifer's once beautiful shining silver armor began to change into black and became fused to his skin. Raphael said, Master, look at your armor! Lucifer looked down at his chest, and his armor had become a part of him. He said, Now I am protected for eternity. No weapon, either forged by human or the divine, shall ever penetrate my newly acquired power. Little did he know that only an archangel's sword could penetrate another archangel's armor. Lucifer, in his arrogance, had forgotten the lessons he was taught in the fighting classes as a child. These classes were ones that it had made him take. He always knew in his heart he would never have the need for close combat or the use of his sword. He knew his armor would protect him, and he polished it daily. The fact that his armor was envied by other archangels made him proud, and that was a sin in its eyes. Even as an adolescent, he defied his father with his playful mind tricks on Michael. The four of them rounded the corner and went into another marbled corridor. Angels everywhere were bowing to Lucifer and said, We are with thee. We hate the humans as much as you do. Lucifer said, Good. I will give you a mental image as to where my camp rests. And remember, if I find a traitor among you, I will inflict such torture and pain that you will not be able to endure. Lucifer sent the image and the angels flew out of heaven and toward the seraphim camp. Raphael brought war over to Lucifer at his side. Lucifer, upon death, rubbed his beloved pale horse with blood splashed on his side and said, Master, you do have a traitor. He looked at the sky and pointed, It is that one, sire. Lucifer rubbed his palms together, and a ball of fire incinerated the angel in mid-flight. Any more that you can sense, brother? Raphael obedient said, No, brother, just the one. Lucifer bellowed, Slaughter them all! Leave no one alive, not men, women, or even children. They came back to the long corridor, more blood-stained and tired from their battle. Lucifer strolled down the blood-soaked hallway, taking great pleasure in the crimson color of the clouds. He looked and saw the dominations. Some were still alive and begged for mercy and prayed to God for help. Lucifer said, God? No God, only me, and I will be the new leader of heaven, and if any of you that survive call me God, I will kill you on the spot. You will call me Lucifer. The angel that begged and tried to speak to Jehovah, Lucifer bent down beside him and rammed his broadsword through the angel's neck. Satisfied that he could hear the moans and dominations in the hallway, he turned back. He stood there in shock for a moment as three dead seraphim soldiers lay in a pile, swords still clutched to their hands and still ready to fight, even in death. He thought of calling for Raphael to resurrect them, but thought differently. There must be losses on both sides. Lucifer looked at his mighty steeds and said, The next hallway is all yours. You'll have no riders. 
release your rage. Death spoke. Master, I have never ridden without a rider. Thank you. This is going to be fun. War said, Indeed. My fellow beast of burden, this is going to be quite fun. Thank you, master. Both mighty steeds went to one knee and bowed to Lucifer. He smiled, as he knew the mayhem he was about to watch was going to be extreme and exciting. The angels knew these horses and did their best to run away and hide. War struck first, but not with his mighty blow of his hooves. Instead, he bit down on an angel's throat and ripped and tore at the flesh. The angel screamed in horror as his life was bled and onto War's feet. It felt like getting a warm bath from Raquel. Death played his own type of torturous games. He had three dominations cornered, and none of them dared try to confront Death. The pale horse was known throughout heaven. He snorted in their direction, and they all flinched. Death gave out a hearty, sadistic laugh. He then stood on his back legs, towering over the terrified angels, and he brought his front hooves so close to their chests. Again, the angels flinched, and Death was beginning to tire of toying with these pathetic creatures. He turned his back on these angels with confidence, knowing they could never get close enough to him. With a raise of his very long tail, he gave a slow and caring brush against all the angels' faces. Hearing their wails gave Death a sheer shiver up his back, as this was his favorite sound before they died. The next wave that the horses unleashed was unprecedented, even in Ramael's dungeon. Death kicked and turned angels left and right into dust, their wailing sounding like a lullaby to him. War was kicking and dismembering angels at his whim. Some of the dismembered parts of angels still clutched their swords as their hands went flying. This amused Death. Even in the face of my might and power, they still tried to get close enough to me. Both horses triumphantly returned to their riders with large grins upon their faces. Death spoke. I do believe War and I have never had so much fun. Thank you again. We do love being riderless, but enjoy having our masters with us during battle. Raphael went to the sacred fountain in the center of the courtyard and dipped two buckets into the water, untouched by any angel. This water was sacred and the father's very own source to quench his thirst. Raphael, not caring, filled the buckets with the power of the restoring water. Then Raphael did something Lucifer didn't expect. He took a piss in the fountain. Lucifer tied the horses to one of the columns at the end of the archangel bedchamber hallway. Lucifer spoke, Raphael and I must do this alone. I want to kill it, and Raphael can watch as the life runs out of the father, yet does nothing to cure him or resurrect him once dead. The horses drank deeply, and Lucifer spoke, Nice touch with the piss, dear brother. The horses, looking upset yet ever loyal, obeyed their riders and reluctantly stayed behind. Lucifer and Raphael, swords drawn, began down the hallway. Lucifer stopped and said, What the fuck are you doing? Do you know nothing about war tactics? You need to get behind me, and we need to be wing to wing. You watch the back, and I will watch the front. Makes sense to you? Raphael said, Of course, this is brilliant. They walked past Michael's door, knowing he was with Gabriel. They bypassed his door as well. Raphael and Lucifer knew their bedchambers were empty as well. Ramiel and Seraquel's were empty. The girls' rooms were also empty. Nobody was there to protect its door. Before Lucifer could touch the handle, Raphael said, This is an ambush, Lucifer. The virtues reside in his bedchamber, awaiting our arrival. Good, Lucifer said. We will catch them off guard. Well done again, brother, with your incredible telepathic gift. Lucifer grabbed the handle of God's bedchamber and flung the door wide open. The first two lines of defense closest to the door rushed Lucifer. With one sweep of the talons on his hand, the swords that the pathetic virtues held were instantly impaled to the hilt in the walls that surrounded them. Raphael screamed, Seraphim, now! The seraphim rushed into the room, swords drawn, bloody and reeking of death. Most virtues laid down their swords. The sound of the metal hitting the marble floor was music to Lucifer's ears. A few more, bold and defiant, made a move toward Lucifer, along with ten seraphim. Lucifer said, do not kill them. Maim them. Stab them. Cut off their wings as long as they live. 
I don't care what you do to them. The seraphim took great pleasure, inflicting pain on the virtues that had the nerve to go against Lucifer and Raphael. Lucifer spoke, I am going to chain all of you together, single file. I will bind your wings under your arms, as the thought of flight may get you killed. I will then chain your hands together, and if you notice, the chains are very heavy, and harbor very sharp hooks in them. Do not try to escape. It will be futile. You will also be roped to the bridle of death. I warn you, do not piss off this horse or allow a touch from him. You will be turned to ash. It's a very unpleasant way to die. Behind the line of you sorry excuses for angels will be Raphael and war. Again, I would not piss off this steed. It has no patience for stupidity. Lucifer called for Raphael to come to the front near him, virtues tripping and falling as he made a semicircle. I have a great gift to give your leader, Raphael. I'm going to take such great pleasure making him watch as I murder each and every one of you, with the added bonus of having my fucking slut sister bound and made to bear witness to my debauchery. Raphael will hold her leash as I will make your fucking leader kneel before me. Any protests? Questions? Lucifer put his blackened hand to his ear and said, Oh, such silence. Nobody cares to challenge me? Fine. You are all cowards, and that's why you are virtues. Quite pathetic, if you ask me. Do you not think so, Raphael? Master, I cannot normally read a virtue. However, with them being terrified, I can read their easily penetrated minds, and they are all extremely leery of, of you, me, death, and war. It amuses me as it does you. Lucifer asked Raphael, Did you bring the dead dominations with you? Yes, my dear brother, I left a contingent to round up the dead virtues, the dead dominations, and our beloved fallen seraphim will be drawn in a hearse, while the others will be dragged by horseback. Lucifer smiled. Oh, that is a fucking fantastic idea. Raphael, confused as he could not read his brother without permission any more, had no idea of this grand plan. Lucifer spoke to everyone, turned around on war, and said, Now, you scared bunny rabbits, that's why you are virtues. You may be the best in battle, but as far as torture or bloody massacre, it sickens you. You are all excuses of your name, Virtue. You get to see what real terror is as we are making a visit to my sister, Raphael. Raphael spoke. Brother, your brilliance never ceases to amaze me. Is she to ride one of the two left? Lucifer said, I have no intention of leaving any apocalyptic steed behind. You will see what I am about to do. They made a large detour to get to the stables. Lucifer dismounted Death and looked at his sister, her scar still visible, as she cowered under feathery wings. "'Do you fear me?' "'Yes, Master Lucifer, I do.' "'Raise your head and walk with me. I am about to unleash the last two apocalyptic steeds. I want you to ride pestilence, and we will take famine to my loyal general, Seraquel.' Raquel, a bit confused, said, Master Lucifer, these steeds will not permit anybody but you and their rider to mount them. Lucifer took his sister's head in his hands. Those fucking horses will do what I tell them, got it? Raquel stopped at Famine's stall and unlatched the door. The horse, seeing Lucifer, bowed on one knee and said, Yes, my master, time to ride. Lucifer said, Yes, however, your rider is not to be woken and I ride death, and Raphael rides war. Raphael will ride you, and any problems with this, I will eviscerate you. Do you understand? Famine shook his head and said, Master, I have loved Raphael for all time. It would be an honor for her to ride me. I would lay down my life for her. Pestilence said, Thank you, my merciful master, for allowing me out finally. Lucifer said, See? This is the type of fucking complete loyalty I require from all subjects, four-legged or two, winged or not. They exited the barn, and the virtues gave out a lard, harmonious gasp. 
Famine said, Allow me to introduce myself. I am Famine, and it would be wise of you to not make me angry. Watch this. Famine waited no time and went straight to the first virtue he saw. He touched this angel with his brow, and the angel began to grow pale and very thin. Lucifer bellowed, Enough, Famine! I want them alive! Famine said, Oh, he will live. It will be a miserable existence, but he will live. Any other of you fucking angels have a problem with my appearance and the fact that a female archangel sits upon my back? My deaths are slow and merciless. The four horses have their own special abilities, and mine is to make you die of starvation, no matter how much you eat. Understand me? Following famine out of the barn, led by Lucifer, was pestilence. This horse smelled of disease, great and small. Lucifer handed Raquel pestilence's reins. He could feel the virtue eyes on him. Allow me to tell you about me. I cause death with sickness. I kill babies in their sleep. I slaughter cattle, so then famine can have some fun. Watch what I can do. He grabbed the closest virtue by his hair with his teeth. The angel immediately became violently ill, and smallpox appeared upon his face. Lucifer finally said, Enough! They have seen your powers. Now we need to get back to camp. Lucifer looked around for the virtue with the largest wings and said, You there, virtue scum! Sit upon Pestilence as he needs a winged rider. I will protect you from the many diseases he carries. This protection only lasts while you ride him and are my captive. Do not stray too far from me, as Pestilence will unleash such disease upon you. It will kill you slowly and painfully. Understood? Now we can be home even faster. I know that wretched Gabriel and that fucking Michael are close, and we have not much time to get ready and set up the surprise I have waiting. Let's fly and ride. The horses let ride the virtue soldier, Lucifer, and the others to their destination. The angel that was riding pestilence began to become violently ill and collapsed. Lucifer thought, guess you must have had to be an archangel to be immune from the influences of the apocalyptic steeds. Thanks for listening. Chapter 10, The War Rages, is from the book The Long Fall, Book 1, The Inception of Horror by Kathleen McCluskey. You can find a link to the book in the Story Sources section of the show notes. And if you're a published author and you'd like for me to narrate a chapter of one of your books in a future Dark Chapters episode, I'd love to work with you so long as the subject matter of your book fits the Weird Darkness genre. You can email me at darren at weirddarkness.com, that's D-A-R-R-E-N, and tell me about your book or novel, and be thinking about what chapter of the publication would make a great entry for the podcast. If you're not an author or writer, but you are a voracious reader of horror, paranormal, true crime, or just plain darkly weird nonfiction books, and you have one that you'd like to suggest for dark chapters, drop me an email and let me know about it. I can reach out to the author. Weird Darkness is a production of Barler House Productions. Copyright Weird Darkness 2021. I'm Darren Marler. Thanks for joining me in the weird darkness.